so for today's video I thought I would give a little bonus one instead of just uploading on Wednesday and show you guys how I made this mixed media shabby chic birthday card. <laughs> My friend's birthday is today so I thought today would be a good time to upload this video and his favorite colors are pink and orange. I know, a little weird, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of shade, it's fine. <laughs> He'll see this and he'll laugh, I swear. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna get right into it. I used this plain orange, well, almost plain orange, page from Bo Bunny's Aria's Garden line. And I decided to use this page first because usually when I'm doing mixed media pages that have a bunch of different colors, it's best to use more of a plain sheet for the very backdrop, just so you can really see a little bit of snippet of the main color. Also with mixed media cards, the more layers, the better. <laughs> So I layered the crap out of this thing. It might take a really long time. Like this video is only like seven minutes long, but I think this card took me like two hours to do. <laughs> but it was very relaxing two hours. So for the second sheet, I actually ended up using another page from this same line and used the opposite sides. And instead of cutting it a direct square like I did with the previous sheet, I kind of made it on this diagonal thing because I really didn't want to cover up too much of the rose design from that orange page. So to kind of see a little bit more of it, I tried ripping the paper here so that you could see the back side of this double-sided page. That's the beauty of these scrapbooking lines, that they have the opposite side that you can always peek through whenever you do all this ripping. And I layered it with this third sheet from the same Bow Bunny line to instead have this rose peek out. Because like I said, as much as I like the other rose, this rose just, I felt like it looked cuter. So I just spaced it out more with the ripping and played around with it. And usually when I'm doing the measurements here, I try to do it on the page on the opposite side, but because I had to line it up with the details, like I just made sure the pencil was really, really fine so that it could be easily erased and you wouldn't notice it after you're done doing it. So I distressed the edges with some distressed ink pink. Uh, I'll leave the link for the exact color in the description below because I honestly don't remember what the name is. But I did it all around the edges so that it adds a little bit extra detail and did a little bit of extra tearing so you can see more of those backdrop roses. So I ended up grabbing this scrap piece of pink paper from my collection, but I didn't like the stars side, so I flipped it over and it was just a plain pink. So after I was done fiddling around with that piece of paper, I grabbed this scrap ribbon that I honestly cannot tell you where I grabbed this. It is not bought, I just remember it's some scrapping thing from something, and cut it up into three separate bits so it would line up with the brick and just distress the edges a little bit with my fingers so it would spread out and look a little bit more messy. <laughs> So then we go in with our molding paste and I use this stencil since he is a huge fan of jazz music so I thought it'd be cute to have some molding of musical notes. With molding paste you really don't have to make it look perfect. Uh, again, beauty of mixed media, it the messier and scrappier it looks that usually turns out the best. And I had some of this ink spray so I just splotched it on and you gotta make sure you're really careful when you're using this ink because it is very, very messy. So I cleaned it up a little bit with Q-tip and then secured on those ribbons that I had previously cut. After securing those, I grabbed some more scraps from my bin, ripped it apart and kind of just played around with it, added some pink distressing again at first a little bit of extra detail and just went ham with the scraps. I'm trying to explain this properly. I hope I'm doing some kind of somewhat of a decent job. So I grab some more doilies, and these ones are from Michaels so that they're tiny enough to fit on cards. And after ripping a bit of it and scrunching it together, I used a little bit more of that pink ink as an edging, just so it brings out some more pink, because I feel like right now it's very orange, and I felt like it needed way more pink. So we're gonna add some more of that color a little bit later. <laughs> so after securing the doily, I added some more scraps from that previous rip 
It's, you can tell it's the same paper as from that bird one and just played around with the scraps. So when I started adding this pink lace ribbon, I actually made it a little bit longer than the actual edge of the card. I usually do this so that when it's ready to secure, there's extra to just wrap it around the edge so that it doesn't look like a jagged cut. If you like that look, go for it, but I personally don't unless it's a certain type of ribbon that can like distress easily, like the previous ones that I used a little bit earlier in this video. So you can see I just have the extra and I'll just fold it over. And when you're using Fabri-Tac to fold over things like this, prepare your fingers to get full of glue. It is very messy, <laughs> but at least it rubs off fairly easily. So after I thought it was secure enough, I glued it to the actual card and then started playing around with these Prima flowers. So with this Prima flower, I actually wanted to put it there because I wanted to give the illusion that it was kind of growing out of the corner of the paper. So with the rest of these main flowers up there, I actually grabbed these seashells. I think they're from the Bahamas when I went there years ago, but again, I'm not really sure. A lot of this stuff is just random things that I find either from vacations or like my friend's trash. Well, not like actual trash trash, but you know what I mean? Just like little knickknack things that break off of whatnot, right? You can keep anything for mixed media. So because I didn't have a sticker that said happy birthday or anything like that, I decided to just put the age that he's turning on the card instead of trying to make my own sticker that would honestly probably look pretty bad. And I thought it looked a little bit too plain and being just white and didn't stick out enough since there was already a white piece of paper behind it. So that's why I distressed it with some brown ink. So I thought this molding paste actually looked a little bit too plain for my liking, so I tried to add some glitter and embossing powder. But then I was doing it and I was like, maybe I think I overdid it. But at the same time, I was like, it still looks pretty, but this looks a little bit too feminine. But at the same time, he did ask for an orange and pink card, so I wasn't really sure what to do. <laughs> so I just added a bunch of the embossing powder, tried to save as much as I could, because you can see how messy it gets. You want to really keep as much as you can. So going in with the vintage photo ink, I went around the edges of the outside of the actual cardstock. Brings out the eggshell a little bit more. And with that, I added some little extra sparkle on the top corner because I thought I looked a little bit too plain. I was getting a little, uh, little carried away at this point, <laughs> but I decided to still add some more embossing powder, melted it down with the embossing heater or whatever the heck that thing is called. I borrowed it from a friend like years ago and it's just mine now. So that's it. That's the final thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe learned a little something extra about how to do mixed media cards. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on Scrappy Wednesday. Bye!